In episode one, we shared how the College of Liberal Arts at the University of Texas at Austin is developing SMOCs, Synchronous Massive Online Courses, as their unique method to improve the large lecture course format. In this episode, we'll take a deeper look at how these courses are designed. And this led us to developing an online class that we call a synchronous massive online class, an SMOC called a SMOC. And the SMOC technology was one whereby we taught a class much like a, a late night television show. And we tried to make it compelling and exciting, fun, but also very informative. So the way that we've done it is that Sam and I sit behind a news desk. We have fake news in a green screen. We interview somebody virtually every day. We have a have different segments. We break the class into small groups so that we can flip a switch and students now are in a group with five people from in a class of 1500 and this group of, of five people for example will type and they're all like instant messaging they're all connecting with each other and working as a group on a particular problem that we're trying to get across. The course design for SMOCs include a focus on frequent assessments, and this approach has some interesting results. One of the things that I had no idea would be the way that I would end up doing something is that we do a quiz for the students every single class. So the way that they get their grade from this class is that it accumulates all of these different quiz grades over the whole semester, as opposed to doing you know, four kind of regular four semester exams or something like that. What I was surprised to find is because we integrated assessments into attending class, just like in an in-person class, you know, I always held quizzes in my in-person classes too, so they would come, right? But for some reason, I'm not sure exactly why, our attendance in a thousand person class is 95%. The live class time does not just consist of lectures and quizzes in most cases. Instructors may do interviews over green screen, recorded sessions working with real-world view from the discipline, or even show relevant video segments. Behind the scenes, there's a studio quality control room for streaming and recording, as well as supporting staff interactions with students through a chat room. This is the hub of the live course. The virtual home of the course is through the Canvas Learning Management System. UT Austin staff have developed a custom application based on the SMOC design, and this app integrates directly into Canvas. It controls class and small group discussions, personalized quizzes, links to additional readings and activities, and much more. And they have all of this great technology, you know, set up for being able to do things like give them a question in the same topic that they missed a question the last quiz. I can't do this just as a human being, right, in my classes. If you miss a question on a test, I'm not going to circle back on the next test and give you a personalized question that then asks about that particular topic that you missed, of course. And instead, they have the technology to be able to do this. The result is a variety of courses that vary from heavy live video production to more straightforward lectures and examples, and they are even branching beyond SMOCs into other course designs. Now we've also moved to something closer to what I guess many would call a flipped classroom where we took the recordings from our previous live lectures, put them into mod, what we call modules, as should be apparent, this is not a low-cost operation, as it requires studio, video production, and video streaming services. I think I would probably quibble a little bit with the fact that it's expensive. I mean, it takes some outlay, but because we're focused on large enrollment classes and because we're doing this in the context of other facilities' costs here, the cost is actually pretty manageable if you're diligent about it and if you do the design right. Offsetting course design cost against facility savings gets to issues like delaying or avoiding the need to construct a new building, or increasing enrollment within the same facilities. Another aspect of cost management is that much of the infrastructure is reused with other programs. But what is the general range of costs to develop each course, ignoring the instructional costs while the courses are running? So cost-wise, you know, we're looking at probably not counting what you're paying faculty, something in the range of, depending on what the faculty salary is to, to do the development cost, in the range of twenty-five dollars to $35,000 the first time we, we teach a class. But we've got that cost down to between twenty and twenty-five dollars now. If you have a thousand students in a course, you're talking twenty, twenty-five dollars a student. 
it's not it's not bad smocks flipped classroom modules self-paced courses all based on studio production of live video the university of texas at austin is taking a different path to try and personalize the large lecture class. In our upcoming episode, we'll look at whether there are signs of improved learning outcomes from this approach.